We're back with a bonus conversation you'll only see here on CBS News New York. So we're going to get off the congestion pricing thing. I'd like to ask you, is Congress the last stop for Josh Gottheimer? Could you might be thinking about running for governor? Uh, people have been very gracious in coming up to me and asking me about that and uh, encouraging me. Right now, I'm focused on one thing, fighting the congestion tax and also fighting for the families of northern New Jersey in Congress. So, so that, basically, that, you're ducking the question. Basically, I got, a, I got a job right now that I'm focused on. Uh, but it's very people... But you're young. Flattering. I mean, you could maybe want to do something else. I mean, Congress forever? I don't think well, so. You know, the, you know, we'll see what the future has, but right now, I got, I got a job. So the Supreme Court on Friday uh, struck down the move by the president to uh, forgive tuitions for people um, who had gone to college. They said that the president didn't have the right to do it, but Congress did. Your reaction to the Supreme Court ruling, and do you think there's any chance that anybody, that Congress would take up this issue and do tuition forgiveness? I think it's a great question. I think it's going to be very tough in, in this Congress with a divided government to get that done. I do think there are things like actually looking at how people, so right now if you have a college loan, you can't renegotiate your interest rates, you have, right? So you can refinance your home, but you can't refinance your college. And I think that's ridiculous. I also think when the federal government gives a student a loan, um, we shouldn't make money on that, right? You should charge something to manage the, the, right, the, the people who gave the loans, but I don't think the government should make money on that. And I think we need to hold colleges accountable for outcomes. So there's plenty of things I think you can get bipartisan support around, uh, but this would be very, very tough in this climate. Even though you're part of the Problem Solver, Problem Solver. Problem Solvers Caucus, guess, yeah. yeah, 64 of us. Yeah, and so so I'm aware of like where you think where I can where I think I can get people together around. I think that's a tougher issue, but that's why I'm saying some of these other issues actually I think you could get bipartisan support. One of the things that the problem because we've got, because we've got to make college right more affordable for folks definitely. So one of the things that the problem solvers are into is the ever popular salt, the deductibility of state and local taxes, which you are in agreement with Mike Lawler, uh, Rockland County Congressman, and others. I wonder if there's any possibility that that could see the light of day. So we've gotten it passed out of the House now four times since I'm in Congress of restoring salt because we've got to make life more affordable and get taxes down for folks. And the red states have been sticking it to us for, for years since 2017 when they That's got That's because passed. the red states get more money. Oh, you know, the moochers, right? I call them moocher states, right? They, they take far more back to their states than we do. So we've been fighting, obviously, to bring it back. I, 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 we've been working on this issue recently. We've been sitting down. We've got a bipartisan SALT caucus. There's a group of us, including Mike Lawler. And uh, I'll tell you, it's clear that there's a bunch of people from New York on both sides of the aisle that want to get this done. Jersey, both sides of the aisle, places like Connecticut, Michigan, California. Um, whether we can get it out of the, the House, and given that the other side of the aisle is largely opposed to it, I think very tough. Tough, to be honest with you, but here's the here's the good news. In two and a half years, it comes back fully, right? So the the tax bill from 2017 will go away, and then it comes back fully in two and a half years. So now they may want to negotiate because they know it's coming back fully in two and a half years. So the moochers and the red states are talking to us and saying, well, what if we did it this way? What if we actually did it now this way? So that's my only hope for this Congress, but I think it's tough. And uh, you've got people like me and others who are like a dog with a bone on this one. But you say it's going to go away in two and a half years anyway? It comes back fully. You get the deduction fully back if we do nothing in two and a half years. I don't want to wait two and a half years, but the bottom line is the, the red states know it's coming back two and a half years, and so they're, they may want to negotiate now. So one of the big issues for Congress, or for Hakeem Jeffries and the Democrats in Congress, is trying to take back the House next year. What, given the fact that you are part of the Problem Solvers Caucus and you deal with a lot of uh, Republicans, including our friend Mike Lawler, is there any chance that you think that you could take back the House, and would that mean trying to defeat your good friend Mike Lawler, who won in an uh, unusual election year here in New York? Well, one of the rules of being in the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, and the, the 64 of us, half Democrat, half Republican, is we never work against other members in the caucus because it's very hard to, to build relationships and trust and get things done if you're trying to work against somebody else. But the, listen, there are other seats in the country that are certainly vulnerable on the other side. Hakeem Jeff is an unbelievable leader and he's doing an incredible job and it's so tight right now the Republicans have a four seat majority so I'm optimistic that you know things will turn but we got a lot of work to do and I think the most important thing we should all be doing is focusing on actually getting things done like averting that debt ceiling disaster we did that by working together Democrats and Republicans last Congress from infrastructure to to issues we dealt with of course on helping veterans and 
uh, common sense gun safety legislation, all those things bipartisan. And I, I think there's plenty of opportunity to work together in the coming weeks. Presidential election the same time. Joe Biden the best candidate for the Democrats? Uh, if he's running, he's my candidate. And but do you think that given what's been going on with him, his age, the, the questions about the IRS investigation of his son, does is he the best candidate for the Democrats? I mean, as I said, if you look at the record of accomplishment in the last couple of years, I don't know how you argue from chips to veterans to gun safety to infrastructure. I don't know how you would say that we're not getting things done under this administration. And by the way, given where the other side is headed, right, in extremism, this whole thing is about common sense first extremism. I, I believe this election will be bad. You've got people who are way out there and then people like me and others who say, okay, let's just try to work together and get things done for the country and put the country first. I think that's the best way we should all be governing. Presuming that Donald Trump is the nominee of the Republican Party, um, can Joe Biden beat him? He can definitely beat Donald Trump. He's done it before. Yeah, but there's it's you know. It's a, yeah, I mean, I, in, in my opinion, I think he'll beat him. I mean, this is it's, it's not even a question, but what's most important, again, and I think this is really important, we have a lot of work to do between now and then. Our number one adversary is the government of China. Like, you know, they think that they know better than we do, right? We live in the greatest country in the world. We have work to do working together to get it done. And the only way we're going to get things done is if we actually cross the aisle and stand together. So now we're going to get to the fun questions. How old were you when you started working? I started working, period? Yeah. Uh, I grew up in, uh, my dad had a store, so as young as I can remember, we, I, was, I was working in his store, and he had a little warehouse with packing stuff, so I don't know, seven or eight. So that was your first job? Yeah, I mean, helping, everyone helped out. Like, that was just the deal, you, you helped. Um, uh, and, and then I had a job scooping ice cream at Ben and Jerry's when I was pretty young. Is that your favorite job? I had, I had, I had job? other good jobs. That was a great job. <laughs> I mean, people are very happy when they buy ice cream. And, you got, and very, you got all the ice cream happy. you could eat? All, all you can eat. And by the way, like I was very, and you get, and you work for tips, right? So you just make people, you know, so people were happy they're coming in and you had to give them a lot of good ice cream. That was the key. And people uh, love Ben and I have to ask you, what was your favorite flavor? Chunky Monkey. Really? You don't like it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love ice cream. I'm an ice cream person. So do you think it's important for young people to work? Yeah, I think it's really important for people to figure out a way. There's a lot of people who have to work. And I think any which way people can work, whether that's helping other people, whether it's working, scooping ice cream or, or with, your, with your folks or however it is, I think it's really important for, from a work ethic perspective that people work. So how do you, and, you know, how do you pick yourself up after making a mistake? Uh, I, you just got to keep going. I don't know, like, listen, everybody makes mistakes. We're all, we all do. The key is just to get back up and to keep fighting. And in, in my job, the most important thing is that you fight for other people, like we're doing the congestion tax, that you, because you, like, my job is to work for other people and, and to just every single day get up and fight. And what it's, uh, I'm blessed by this job, right? You get to help people every single day and people work incredibly hard. You gotta get their backs, whether they're a cop or a firefighter or a veteran or someone who's commuting in. You, our job is to represent people and get their backs. You do that, people will be happy. What was the last book you read for enjoyment? Oh, I know man. you read all about pollution I've in read, New Jersey. But. I mean, I read a lot of reports. I read, just reread Long Walk to Freedom, Mandela's book. Um, if you haven't read it, it's unbelievable. Uh, uh, so that was probably the, the last book I reread. So how many times have you seen Bruce Springsteen in concert? And I know the story, so. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get the number wrong, but dozens, um, uh, dozens of times. My first concert was Springsteen. And on this tour, I've seen him twice so far. Seriously? And I'm going to see him again in the Meadowlands in August, and I'm incredibly excited about it. Last question. Is there a particular Springsteen song that speaks to I'm you? I'm not. Do uh, you want me to pick a song? I mean, I got so many songs that I love. Uh, I think The Rising is, uh, is one of my favorites because I think it just speaks to, you know, after 9-11. In, in, uh, and, and by the way, my dog's named Rosalita. So I love, <laughs> I, I also love Rosalita, because uh, Rosie is, you know, the greatest dog. But yeah, yeah, that's another and one. And what kind of a dog is, is a dog? Uh, a golden doodle. A golden doodle? Yes. How big? A COVID dog. A COVID uh, dog, uh, yes. Yes, my, for my kids. My, uh, I've got an 11-year-old and a 14-year-old, and they begged us for a dog. And my wife had not been a dog person. And now, who's the dog's favorite? My wife, Does by, that, by far. Are you jealous? Totally. 
Um, <laughs> Are you a dog person? I love dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love dogs. So how many I dogs? All, I, how I many dogs lives. would you have if your wife would let you have as many as you I, want? I would definitely have. I'm, I'm, we're, we're pushing for another one. And you if are. She, if she ever watches this, she'll know. Oh yeah, and I want another one. A golden doodle um, or something else? Any kind. I don't really care. I love labs. I mean, I love all dogs. So I would love to have another dog. Uh, but I'm not sure that's in the cards. My kids are also pushing for another dog. Um, but you know, so if you can, if you have any influence, that would help me. Well, as we approach the dog days of summer, I hope you get your dog. And thank you all for joining me, Congressman, and thank you for joining me at home.